Good afternoon, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Well, I guess it's time to sell all your Bitcoins because Mr. Tim Fernholz has told us that Bitcoin is a scam. So, I guess it's all over. Well, before I jump into this, let me review my little correspondence with Mr. Fernholz. This is actually my sent reply to him. I just spoke to him one time in this email and he wanted to interview me uh, apparently maybe wanted a little help on the hit piece he was going to write that uh, apparently his handlers told him to write we'll get into his handlers in a little bit but here's his uh, statement to me hey thanks for responding so a few questions off the top of my head who are you my reply like Satoshi who I am is unimportant and he says what has made you so interested in bitcoins that you turned yourself into a one-man bitcoin CNBC? And I reply, if you watch my Bitcoin report 10, you'll see that I regard the idea that bitcoin represents as world-changing as the invention of the printing press. He asks, why do you think bitcoin critics who argue that its scheme is technically unworkable? And I replied, why? What's unworkable about it? He, he never replied. Or the advantages to the early adopters or folks with extraordinary processing power? And I replied, should not early investors profit from being correct? I suspect many of them have already sold out. And then he asked, what's next for Bitcoin? My reply, more relentless attacks which will all fail. What do you want people to know about the currency? And I reply, that they better get some of it before the dollar collapses. So. That's my exchange with Mr. Fernholz. I thought I smelled a rat, and guess what? I smelled a rat. So now our rat, Mr. Fernholz, has written an article bashing Bitcoin. So let's take a look at it a little bit. He summarizes and talks about Satoshi, and he says it's not the first because Linden dollars were first. Well, Linden dollars are regulated by Linden Lab, so that's not like Bitcoin. And then he gives a real poor explanation of how mining works. No, it's not the 50 Bitcoin bounty is not for just for doing transactions. It's not that's inaccurate. And if you've watched the other Bitcoin channels and videos, you can you've seen how inaccurate the press has been. Is this a coincidence? I think not. Now, he says, Bitcoin isn't just a currency, it's a massive experiment in group trust. But it's also a hint of the financial system to come, and ultimately a scam. Hmm. Interesting. Does he know something we don't? You've probably heard of the digital cash after it was rocked by a sudden changes in value. No, that was a hack. It didn't change in value. A few weeks ago, the value of the Bitcoin briefly plunged to negative eight cents to the dollar as hackers crashed the exchanges and digitally ransacked electronic wallets to the tune of nine million dollars. A single victim claims that hackers absconded with some twenty-five thousand of his bitcoins, worth absurdly approximately three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars at present dollar to Bitcoin exchange rates. Well, those were actually two different stories, and if you'd done any kind of research, Tim you'd know that and we don't even know if this all in vain is person was for real because he registered his name last fall as all in vain and then he goes and loses 25,000 of his bitcoins which was he, what he did was so monumentally stupid it's hard to believe that anybody actually did that so that was probably a setup and the hack was probably set up by the same people who are behind the attack on Bitcoin. And he goes on, Bitcoin is a libertarian's dream come true, a steadily expanding money supply without the state getting in the way of the sweet mechanics of the market. The money changes hands without transaction fees to corporations or government tracking. Hmm. Maybe that's why they don't like it. That's why Bitcoin's most ardent supporters are folks like gold standard advocates and hardcore WikiLeak partisans. As interest in the currency grows, tech-savvy investors have jumped in, 
into the mix, speculating with bitcoins and profiting as demand increases. Early adopters reach returns as large as a thousand or two thousand percent. No, Tim, a thousand or two thousand percent is just ten or twenty fold. The people who were early adopters who bought at six cents and sold at thirty two cents, I don't know how many of them there were, but that is a hundred fold to six dollars, and then that's another four or five times so that's actually 500 fold return so more like 10 to a hundred thousand percent you, you do the math so he's inaccurate there there let's see so far you can't buy anything with bitcoins that you couldn't purchase more easily with cash or a credit card that's not the point Tim Despite rumors that Bitcoin was creating an online hamsterdam where anonymous users could sell drugs, and he goes into the Silk Road thing, more problematically, the economics don't quite work. Currencies are most valuable when lots of people trust and use them frequently. Or maybe their government mandates that they do so, Tim. But PayPal has refused to convert Bitcoins to cash. Hmm, big surprise. And major exchanges like Mt. Gox have fallen to hackers. No, Mt. Gox is back. More secure than ever. A currency that you can't convert into anything else isn't worthless, isn't worth, well, anything. Well, Tim, there's a lot of things you can convert it to, including dollars. But the biggest problem is that despite its anarchic design, the system presents a huge opportunity for big fish to take advantage of the Internet every man. Ben Laurie, a respected web security expert and cryptographer, makes a compelling case that Bitcoin won't work because it accrues such a huge advantage to people who can bring the most computing power, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you go to BTC Guild and look up the hashing power that's going on there, and then if you look at all the others broken down, you can see it's not one group, it's a large number of groups, they're very large, and it's rapidly growing to the point where they can't build a supercomputer that can overcome the network. So the network is growing and that's uh, and his next point is collusion and that's the same thing. These dynamics make watching Bitcoin a lot like watching monetary history in fast forward and then he goes on to explain how that looks like how central banks were founded and etc. Bitcoin still offers a glimpse of a future in which the dollar is digitized no more wasted money printing paper or coins instead blah 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 so oh he does say assuming of course the dollar has any purchasing power left by the time we want to digitize it yeah looks like he did echo that one statement I made so pretty much useless worthless hit piece wrong on all the facts obviously a hit piece that was ordered by the paymaster so Let's look around and see. This appeared on Good Technology. Let's look up Good Technology. Oh, there it is. Good Worldwide LLC. Let's look up Good Worldwide LLC. This is an integrated media platform that provides content experience utilities for people and nonprofit organizations and NGOs. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's a non-profit. So, here's our guys here. Mr. Benjamin Goldhirsch and Mr. Craig Shapiro. These are the guys that founded this non-profit, or pretending to be non-profit, whatever it is. And let's look at Mr. Goldhirsch. Benjamin Goldhirsch. Let's see what he's done. Oh, he just happened to produce by the people the election of Barack Obama. A spectacularly bad movie. Not only that, but cynically bad. Because, as all of you have seen, the colossal flop of a presidency that is Barack Obama was obviously not orchestrated by the people but was orchestrated by his handlers and all of the 
Illuminati banksters and criminals that run this world that put this man in power. So this is our wonderful Mr. Benjamin Goldhirsch, another trust fund baby. And let's look at his partner here, Mr. Craig Shapiro, another trust fund baby who's out to help everybody. So there's your latest hit piece on the Bitcoin and who's behind it. And I'll let you put two and two together and figure out where these attacks are coming from. And we'll talk to you next time.